Hey, my name is Jobby. I'm an adult. Get on the flow. Kang Toys Trans HTT Long Yards. Everyone said so. Row. Which is supposedly a third party version of the Transformers Dinobot Snarl. But it might be a disservice to make that direct comparison. What Kang Toys has concocted here is a little more than a third party figure. I'd even say it's a bit special. Mm. Got this guy for free from the Shozy store, by the way. Thank you. This incredibly high quality box opens up like a. Yeah. And it includes a ton of stuff, which is just hyping me up even more than I already am. You get these extra thick cards. One of them is a completely different figure for some reason. You get these holographic cards. A little too big to be a card at this point. Wish it worked as a mouse pad. It doesn't. And quite a few red envelopes. Oh, hey, fuck toy. My beauty grandson, I give you five dollars. So after getting through these things, which I'll never see again, was the figure itself worth the wait? Yes. The painting and sculpting on this thing is insanely good. Sure, it's a departure from the beautiful initial concept art, but boy, did the final product turn out epic and to make him even more epic you're gonna attach this tail part does not count as parts forming by the way you don't have to remove this part for the transformation and that process is detailed in the instructions and after getting it attached god damn he got that shit off i don't even know if epic is the right word anymore i could actually start worshiping this thing <laughs> oh fuck there's only so many ways i can say this thing looks awesome and even through these crazy precise details the dangerously sharp angles the sleek proportions this guy still works as a fairly faithful redesign of the original g1 snarl he might even be the most faithful the rest of the upcoming kang toys dinobots are drastically different from their g1 counterparts not a bad thing what a great reimagining especially of the split tail kibble and the classic shin spikes are extra dangerous and and that's about where the similarities between this guy and the original end. Head sculpt is completely different. Cool as hell. Features some red light piping. That should have been a light up feature. Not necessary, but come on. Some Transformers fans may not like that he barely looks like a Transformer, but I personally can't get enough of it. If anything, he looks more like a girl. Oh, shit. And that's probably why this prominent backpack doesn't bother me that much. Back lives only matter when the figure that has a prominent backpack is based on a design that didn't. So with this being such a radical departure from the original, they can do whatever the hell they want as far as I'm concerned. As long as it's not too distracting, which it isn't. And as long as it holds together, which it does. And while I much prefer the tail to stay on the back, you can detach it again and convert it into a bow, which also includes an arrowhead split in two, stick them together, and attach that to the barrel. This whole thing finally plugs into the arm. Sticking it in the first time is a bit challenging, but trust me, it gets easier. Patience is definitely a key word when it comes to this thing. You're forced to learn that when it comes to the complex transformation. And just the very act of handling this guy takes a little more effort than I'm used to. Take it easy as you're playing with this thing. There is absolutely zero safeguards to prevent you from spilling blood. Especially when handling these included. Ah, they're big. They're dumb. They're the meaning of life. They can even combine with each other to form something that's not going to be relevant until later much later beyond this video. Subscribe so you don't miss the rest of my Kang Toys Dinobot reviews. I'm assuming this is only the tip of the fully combined sword. I'm gonna kill myself with this. <laughs> you could also remove the blades for swords that are more reasonably sized, but still imposing. And what's left over are these giant guns. All these weapons can be held by the figure. Pretty solid grip. And you could store them in any of these peg holes when not in use. Weapon storage for days. And for his final weapon, let's bring back the bow and convert it again. into this spiky whip, which is obviously just the dinosaur tail, not nearly as impressive as the bow, but it is an impressive preview of what's to come. Myself, you best believe that this is a fully articulated tail, and the rest of the figure is fully articulated. Feels great to handle so much die-cast metal here. Everything that should plug in does, except the steg head at the chest, that doesn't seem to plug in, but that ball joint is tight enough that it does stay in place. Very hefty, very solid. 
again. And again. Very sharp. I got more scratches from this thing than I do my own cat. So exercise the utmost caution when posing this guy. Ball joint at the head. Every ball joint can be a swivel. Looks up that far and looks down that far. Swivel at the shoulder pad. Rotation at the shoulder pad. Which you could pair with the rope. Rotation at the shoulder to make things look natural. Arm moves out. Swivel here. Hinge joint at the elbow. And another hinge joint that's really tight. This part tends to fall off. I should probably glue that. Hinge joint at the wrist. Swivel here. Hinge joint at the thumb. Ball joint. Hinge joint. And a ball joint. Hinge joint at all of his fingers. Individually articulated. Waist swivel. Ab crunch. Not a ratchet joint, but it is pretty tight. Side to side. Ball joint at the side skirts. Ball joint at the front skirts. Which makes way for a rotation at the leg. Can't move back that far. Beautiful spread. Thigh swivel. Double bend at the knee. Hinge joint at the top shin spike. And a hinge joint swivel at the bottom one. They each also have up and down movement. Ankle can be pulled out, revealing some up and down movement. A pretty good pivot, which can be increased by working the ball joint at the toe and the heel. And the toe can point down, but when are you ever going to do that? Posability here is amazing. You can make this outlandish design even more However, I feel the need to repeat myself yet again. Please be careful when handling him. I don't want you guys buying this thing off my recommendation, then crying about how you lost an eye. Links in the description, obviously. You'd be forgiven if you forgot that this was the first part of a combiner, because he stands pretty dang tall on his own. Size comparison time. Here's Figma Modic Economy, Haya Toys Godzilla, The Magic Square Light of Peace, my previous review, The Zero One Studio C Not Primus, my hands hurt, and the Planet X Vulcan, one of my favorite Transformers figures ever, in large part due to that dino rhythmic transformation. This guy reaches those same heights, but with a lot more bloodshed. Just follow the instructions and uh, don't hurt yourself. I hope you have health insurance. And you've already seen this process with the whip. I don't have to show it to you again, right? Don't cry. While the instructions are clearly illustrated for the most part, even featuring a bit of English, God bless America, they're a bit misleading. Certain parts of the figure don't line up quite as easily as you'd think they would. Certain angles and positioning of parts is a little too precise. Like the legs here, you gotta fold them up, pretty standard for a transformation, but there's no tab, peg, or any sort of stopping point to indicate when you're supposed to stop.
takes a few tries, but just have a bit of patience and you'll find that everything lines up and plugs in as advertised. So after a couple of hours, we have the Stegosaurus mode. That was more than a little rough the first time, not gonna lie. But it's the kind of complexity that's intriguing rather than mind-numbingly frustrating. This transformation made me want to master it. I've transformed this thing over five times by now. And believe me, it does get easier the more times you cut yourself. But oh, is it worth the pain? I love this mode. The dino lover in me is absolutely biased. But come on, it's a transforming robot. Stegosaurus, one of the most iconic dinosaurs next to the T-Rex. And I can't wait to get this next to the T-Rex. The proportions are great, the painting and sculpting is as clean as ever, and it feels as good as ever. But that's as long as you took the time to line everything up. As I mentioned in the transformation sequence, which you shouldn't skip, he's such a chunky boy. Oh! But I must mention, I kind of missed that Zoids-esque design that we got in that initial concept art. This more anatomically accurate version is still really cool. However, you can still see the Zoids influence in the weapon storage. That looks so good. You can even reattach the swords for this kind of winged look, but the guns are where it's at. And to top off this delicious Stegosaur Sunday, he's still really poseable. Ball joint at the head. Every ball joint can be opening mouth. Hinge joint, hinge joint, which allows him to look down really far and looks up that far. You even get some side to side. Shoulders are the exact same as in the robot mode and a ball joint at the dino hand allows for a pivot very nice oh. all of his spines are articulated technically doesn't count unless that's accurate to stegosaurus anatomy just position them in a way that looks good to you no midsection articulation which i don't even want to think about considering all the work that it took to get it together ball joint at the hind legs allows for rotation full 360 not that bad of a spread Boy, yo, yo. Kind of a fake thigh swivel. Bend at the knee. The top part of the knee can bend forward. Doesn't look the best. Hinge joint. Ball joint at the foot. Once again, a pretty good pivot. And the tail. Hinge joint. Hinge joint. Hinge joint. Hinge joint. Hinge joint. And the hinge joint. Hinge joint. Hinge joint. Hinge joint. Hinge joint. Hinge joint. Allows for some beautifully curvy natural poses. Not quite SH monster arts, but close enough. Posability is fantastic. If this was just a non-transformable robot dinosaur, Dinosaur, I would still be satisfied. You could barely even tell we're talking about the same figure. Especially because it's significantly bigger? Am I going crazy? Size comparison time again. Here's Monica, Godzilla Prime, and the Planet X Vulcan. One of the best dinosaur modes ever, with this guy reaching that level. I cannot wait until the Kang Toys Grimlock comes. I'm gonna come. Both the robot mode and dinosaur mode are winners. Kang Toys, please, you already have my ass. But then I remember once again that this is the first part of a combiner team. And then again I come. Blood. Ah! Yeah, this part's not as fun. If you thought lining up the dinosaur mode was hard, this part is gonna eat your ass. The instructions say to push the legs up, but again, there's nothing to indicate how far you push them up. This is the correct answer though, trust me on this.
here we have the lower leg mode. The process to get here kind of sucked. I still don't know if I've done this 100% correctly. Sure, some things plug in, but not enough plugs in. Are the dinosaur legs in the right position? Can't really tell because this part doesn't tab in. Are the arms in the right position? The space between the arm and the leg seems a little bigger than what's in the pictures. But if I wanted to close that gap, I would have to push the legs farther. But then that wouldn't allow me to get this arm into this peg. Get out of here with this 45 degree bull roar. If the angles are going to be that precise, it had better be able to lock into that position, which it do not. Maybe I'm just too American for this. With such precise angles and too many numbers, this was clearly made for Ching Chong. But the leg mode itself looks great. Even if it does look like a mangled stegosaurus, you can kind of see the shape of a leg, I think. Well, luckily, if you're the target audience for this figure, you won't have to squint. I swear I can see the slight curve of a shin and the slight bulge of a calf. Here's my leg for comparison. Oh, not much in the way of posability, just as it should be. If this is gonna be something as structurally important as a leg, it had better be a solid as possible, then yeah, it is pretty solid. I just hope that the lack of tabs doesn't cripple it later. So it might not look like much right now, but I could easily see this as part of a larger hole. A much, much larger hole. My ass. The final size comparison. Madoka Godzilla Prime and Vulcan. As not fun as the leg transformation was, I've got a good feeling that it's gonna be worth it. The fully combined Shura King, at least I think that's what it's gonna be called, Volcanius, it's gonna be quite the sight to behold. Way bigger than some of the biggest toys we've covered before. If that final transformation wasn't so... Uh, this would have been perfect. Can't wait for the rest of the Kang Toys Dinobots to come out. I believe the next one is Swoop. But this time, I promise not to abandon this Kang Toys line like I did with the Predacons. Just, uh, don't abandon me until then, okay? Gotta give a big shout out to all my members and patrons. All you deluxe class members and double kiss patrons should be scrolling on the screen in a bit. As for you highest paying members and patrons, here's all your shout outs. Starting with my leader class members. Phoenix Logie. Jobby 2. Wait, that's me. Guerrero Power. Joseph Leroy. Number 234K. Lord Tekkit. Arch Cyber Knight Mikey. Crazy Dia 64. The One Who Laughs. Archaon 5. God of All Daleks. Kana Candy. Saber Redfin. The Alia, Dim Sum Garbage, Melania Blade of McKella, Boxhead, SSJ Broly 2001, Ayrton Chitwood, Neon Reddit, Mr. Porsche, Scarlet Scout 259, Dan, Tag Naros, Anime Gods of Gaming, Mothman, Astro B057, Cam After Dark, Squardzilla, Toy Scourge TV, Cold Taku, John Birchfield, Breakaway TA, Luxana, Jonas RT, Common Rider KFP, and Zelda Gamer LD401. As for my Triple Kiss patrons, Curry Spice. CC 6738, Mike, Mr. Jackzo, Kieran Herlihy, Mast, Abe Sapien, Fate, Boney's Network, Austin Sabatino, Squardzilla, Throwing Games 101, Tiger Boy, Z Naki Shark Z, Smithy Killer, Tarn the Robot Layer, Morris Voices, Gorgangus, Josh and Samuel's Elevators, Cam After Dark, Dim Sum Garbage, Genius Jedi, The Blue Pixeling Entertainment, Proxy Fox, Luxana, Need More Time 11, That Meth Addict, Sausage Fiesta, Scarlet Scout, Artist 101, Harry McStrange, Alex Hewitt, Josh Montemayor, Nathalia Munoz, Daniel Morris, Mighty Snack, Crew Sissy the, Ken Rodman, Ryan Kuhn, Jawan, Striker374, Ming Yi Caesar, Mr. Jenkins, Weed Horse Theo, and Michael McLaughlin. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. I look forward to a new month of new toy reviews. And also look forward to the fail box next week. Use my hashtag. There will be some new rules, though. Look out for those. We want to avoid another incident of schizo posting.